Over the past three years, I've spent a ton of time in the pit with Sean and Shane over at Willow Creek Waterfowl. Some of my best memories waterfowl hunting have come from that pit during the spring migration. I'll be the first to admit I have the sickness that is snow goose hunting. And with the record hatch reported last year, there were definitely some high hopes. Uh, it started off cold, but we knew that once the weather righted itself and got into the typical February, March style of weather, things were gonna get crazy. That crazy cold January that pretty much everybody had really extended on into the start of February. And the spring migration was behind schedule. But as is always the case, they figure out a way to pick up, to gain that ground back uh, when they get delayed like that. And uh, when you're snow goose hunting, you want clear skies, sunshine, and a little bit of a south wind. And uh, we had that quite a few times as we got into the middle of February.
every year, there are days that will surprise you. There's days going into it where you've got what you think are the right conditions. You plan on it being a really good day and it just doesn't pan out for whatever reason. If you're in a gap in the migration or whatever. And there's days you go over there or days you snow goose hunt where you're really not all that hopeful. The weather looks crappy. You don't think birds are really gonna push that day and lo and behold, it's one of those days where for whatever reason they decide, yeah, let's go north. That is what really sucks me in to snow goose hunting and really waterfowl hunting in general. You don't know until you go out there that day because anything can and will happen. Josh DeWitt with Brookstone Kennels. We're gonna do a drill now with, uh, with a finished dog on a back command. And this is an important skill to keep maintained, uh, not only with your finished dogs, but also with your youngsters coming up. And uh, it, it proved itself out earlier this year when we were on a snow goose hunt where we had to drive the dogs back through a huge spread of decoys to get them out to the birds that had fallen long. So one of the drills that we do here at Brookstone Kennels is actually set up our back command where the dog has to deal with obstacles. We've got field decoys out, we've got a wall they've got to clear, we've got cover out there, another fence. And you wanna practice this at home, driving your dog back no matter what's in front of them so that you can get them out in a situation like that where we've got 3,000 decoys out and we've got to get the dog through it to pick the bird. So we're going to set this drill up and let you folks have a look. For this drill, you can have your dog with you or you can set out your dummies and then get your dog out of the kennel. Today in particular, we're going to have the dog out with us. So he's going to see where these dummies are planted and that's okay because we're just working on a straight back catch command. So here we're going to put one over this fence. We're going to let him see it. We're going to tell him no, leave it, because we're going to put out a couple. Heel. We're going to put this one out right here in plain view. And as you can see, I like to use a white top on my dummy so the dog can clearly see it. This is going to help them drive straight back when you ask them to go back. I want them to see it, at least this first one initially. Heel. Now what I want to do is set my dog up in line where he's got to deal with all of these obstacles in front of him or behind him in this case. Sit down. Sit down. So he's going to have to drive through or around our field decoys over a wall to pick this first dummy. Always blow your stop whistle before you handle your dog because this is what's going to happen out in the field. You've got to stop him to handle him. Hold back. Cleared the wall. Dead. Now, we've got a second one out. We're gonna run him on the exact same line, but this time we're gonna to have to continue to drive him back with our voice. Sit. Hold back. He was gonna cheat the wall. So we bring him back, that's not what we want. Go back. Little correction there to remind him to go straight back when I ask him to. Hold back. Hold back. Go back. Go back. Go back. I'm gonna drive him back with my voice. Got our bird. Now the reason I got him there is because he understands when he hears go back, that means just to keep going back until he either picks up the scent or we stop him and handle him on the dummy. Dead. Good boy. Overall, not a bad retrieve. This is exactly what you want to see in your training. You want to see where the holes are at, where he's weak, where you need to stop and make improvements. I was giving him a straight back cast. He wanted to go right and cheat that wall. So this is exactly what we want to see in our training so that we don't have this problem come this hunting season when we got our dogs out. Over the years, we've had some really, really memorable hunts in the pit of Willow Creek. Um, I'm not a numbers guy, but if you talk to any snow goose hunter, that century mark is one that everybody strives for. It doesn't happen very often, and if you talk to an honest snow goose guide, they're going to tell you 25, 30, 35 is going to be an average day. That's a good day. If you shoot 50 or better, 
that's a great day. But to get to 100 snow geese takes a lot of things to go in your favor. It doesn't happen very often. You can't use that mark as the dividing line between a successful hunt or unsuccessful hunt. But that is a number that a lot of snow geese hunters strive for. And in the years over at Willow Creek, we've come close, but we hadn't gotten there yet. I think that was six. Was it six? I think it was six because the four here died. You caught you killed two over here off the right, didn't you? I killed one. Get ready. Get him! Oh. 
to be there on the day that it finally eclipsed. 100 snow is something I will never ever forget. To see all that hard work that Sean and Shane put in and all that planning, all the stars aligned that day and uh, got a little scared there at one point where uh, we're sitting there knocking on the door and I say to Sean, two, two got shot over here, right? That's 100. No, only one. So you're sitting at 99 and you're thinking, okay, uh, there's not very many minutes left in the day. Let's Let's cross our fingers, and lo and behold, the Snow Goose God sent that one solo sailing in, and that got us to the century mark. And for good measure, we did end up having one more flock right there at last light, and uh, you're high-fiving and uh, reminiscing about the day, and it's, it's definitely a day that I will never, ever forget. And as good as that day was, they had one at the pit that was even better. I didn't get there until late in the day on that record day, but I was still there for plenty of the action. The day ended with over 170 snow geese. Uh, what a year it was hunting the pit at Willow Creek Waterfowl. And as good as this past year was, next year's gonna be twice as fun. They're building a second pit, got a second location picked out. We'll put that pit in the ground here in the coming months. Uh, spots are filling quickly, so if you want in on the action, Check out Willow Creek Waterfowl on Facebook. Hit up Sean to get your name in the book. Can't guarantee how many geese you're gonna shoot, but I can say that you will have one hell of a time hunting with Willow Creek Waterfowl. Keep your hand under it. <laughs> Put another piece of crossways. Cheeseburger warmer. <laughs> How <laughs> redneck can you get? This is about as good as it gets right here. Cheater. Careful, don't let that cheese drip on there. Very cold in the middle. Pretty, pretty <laughs> disgusting, actually. <laughs>